right. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Let's give a big round of applause for Sweeties. The Sweeties. The Sweet Play. My name is Gene Palermanco. I was really excited to see them. The New Art. Huh? Awesome theater. They just showed an eraser head here for a long time. It's a little while, yeah. Yeah. How about that? We're a lot of green. <laughs> we like that. Um, of the great producer of this film, Alex Coco. <laughs> Join me. Join me. Oh yeah, go all the way over there. And the beautifully cockpit star, Earl Cave. Earl, will you join me, buddy? We gotta learn more about that penis. Supremacist academic you love to hate, Simon Rex. Simon, don't worry about this one. Focus on the Niners game. The tight one. Is it a tight one? It's a tight one. And uh, running down the aisle, we have the star of the film, Talia Ryder. John Price Williams, director, maestro. Amazing job. Yeah, thanks everybody. <clears throat> thanks Eugene for doing this. My pleasure. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thanks for making this back. And sign yeah, this is an important game. No, no, this is uh, okay. This is for work for a 49ers thing. Sorry. I literally can see it, right? No, it's okay. I'm San Francisco and the 49ers are about to go to the Super Bowl, so forgive me guys. Yeah, just it's gonna end while we're up here. Just keep us in the loop, give us the updates. Yeah, yeah, but this is first. Yeah, perfect. And give us the updates. Okay. Um I have to say well, thank you, Gene, for your special buddy. He's credited in the film, too. He was the first uh, moderator who's also in the credits, I guess. Maybe. Uh, okay, wow. Well, a little bit of nepotism, huh? Yeah. Oh, I just have to say, um, well, when I sat there and saw the film, luckily, like a privilege, actually, the first thing I really want to say is, what perfect timing, Talia, just running down. It's, it's like, it's going to be a little late. It's like, honestly, like entertainment, you know, showbiz, folks. It's, it's what awesome. For yeah, she walked on the 49ers and scored a touchdown. So, yeah, you've got that perfect time. Yeah, you got it, you got it. Talia, you got the perfect time. What? what? What's the score? I okay. wrote 10 points. Don't just whisper. Okay, 10 points. Okay. <laughs> Do you have money in the No, no, no. Okay. We don't do stuff like that. Ah, simple things like that. Um, no, I was going to say, yeah, so I had the privilege of just like sitting in the room with you guys when you were kind of towards the end of the edit. Um, it was wild and crazy to see all that like, high school, hotel, bus, right? But then when Talia gets in that bathroom and the song kicks in and the titles kick in, the chills went down my spine. I was like, Oh man, this is magic. This is awesome. This is good. No matter what happens after this, this feels awesome. And uh, luckily, everything else felt great too. But um, I was so curious to meet you. And every time I hear it, you sing it. You know a little bit of the song. Want about the song? Evening Mirror, right? Yeah. Uh, my friend Paul Grissad, he's like a, one of these genius musicians. And when he puts out a new record, it means he sends a we transfer to uh, six people. And that's that's his, been his career for 20 years. Really, and he does some soundtracks. He, he did a movie, Brownlands, that I shot. And that's why I met him because he was in it. He did the music for that. And he's just a brilliant musician, but uh, I've never, I've never worked with him like as a, like, yeah, but just that we were working together. And I, and I kind of understand why he doesn't really have a career. It's a very successful career. To work with him is infuriating, but it's hard to work with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you work with him, but I mean, so you guys recorded the song obviously before the movie, right? Yeah. yeah. So like. Well, and it was in the middle. We shot half, and then we came back. I see. This was a very late idea, actually. It wasn't originally yeah. the script. Uh -huh. Yeah, the script. Yeah. And then how long? I just saw. I saw. I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw a movie called I Start Counting with Jenny Agger. She sings the theme song, and and I was just and I was like, that's, that's such a good idea. Have the the lead sing the theme song, and you just have the voice, and and then when you hear her voice throughout the film, the song kind of comes back. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just very memorable. I don't know, just thought it'd be a good idea. And then we, we uh, my girlfriend and I were watching, we 
we were just able to close out and sing it in the movie. Mm -hmm. And where would it go? In the bathroom. You know, I mean, and, you know, but the mirror wasn't, if we weren't that literal, <coughs> it's called the mirror, we weren't really planning on using just the tape looking in the mirror. We actually built the whole set of the bathroom and uh, we had her, you know, like on the toilet, popping pimples, doing all kinds of just bathroom nonsense. And then we, need we, didn't, use, yeah, we didn't use any of those tapes. But, but there's a big one on the internet too. I, is it still there? There's like a long, um, you know, just one tape before that, that kind of doing stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, but yeah, the song is uh, Paul and I were in a song called I'm a Cat, and you know, we just that's a good title. Of, yeah, he just loaded it up with more right around Paul references, and, and then that's the song we have now. Yeah. And she had a cold when she recorded it, she didn't want to do it, but she sounds great, so we did it. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love that. I mean, that must have been a really unique kind of, um, well, I'm, I'm basically aware of this, but the unique privilege of like, shooting half the movie, then taking a break. Do you and maybe Alex want to talk a little bit about like, why you guys did that and how you guys did that? Well, originally it was just for seasons. We wanted, uh, we hoped that when we would shoot a state, there would be snow, and there wasn't. But, and then when, you know, and then we wanted to shoot spring and summer. We just wanted to see seasons because on the, you guys don't know how you're on the East Coast, you have seasons and <laughs> things like that. And I think they're beautiful, and I think that that's like, you know, I wouldn't have a little about that, but I've uh, seen exactly one inch of snow in three years now in New York, so it's kind of seems like it's not really a thing anymore. But um, yeah, that's, that's, so that's why we, I mean, we broke it up also didn't work out for Simon's schedule. She got to go to Poland to do this other film, so it was, it's not like something that the producers really like to do, I guess, but. Um, and also, I was afraid she was going like, to look older because she's 19, I guess we said. So she might change. And then we shot the first, the second half first. So then we wait, she should look older in the beginning and then look young. It's kind of weird. But I was actually worried about that. I don't know why. Six months for a 19 year old. I mean, it's, it's not an ideal you know, as a producer uh, from a schedule standpoint, but it was kind of nice because we made it so that we could really focus in on just a few days, you know, like you know, 10. short span instead of a 30 you know, day uh, shoot, which is obviously a lot more difficult. And I got to edit some of the what we shot and I learned a lot just from doing that and I got better the second time around. Just for talking to actors and, uh, you know, just, yeah, it was very... It also seems like a unique um, advantage you have that, like, I know you made the film with so many of your friends, you know, <laughs> like a normie ass movie, like, uh, oh, come back in three months. Right? You know, you were like, oh, no, I can't. But if you're making it with your friends, they can. And I don't know, did you know like Earl or Simon or Talia before the movie? How did you integrate like these awesome performers? Yeah, no, I didn't know the actors, but the crew was all just people that I've been working with. And you know, I picked my favorite script supervisor. Uh, the art department was a, a person that I've been working with, and it was her first time as production designer. So we could have this was her first movie as director, but she yeah, shot we, like five thousand movies. We were all, but we were all like stepping up. And, but it was, yeah, yeah certainly was friends. And then by the time it was ready, we were ready to shoot, everybody was like, cannot wait to do this again. It was, they, it was like, we had so much fun, you know. But then also, yeah, I was being friends with all these guys, the actors. And I cast them based on just their personalities, also, not from, I'd never seen her in anything. Uh, I'd never seen Jacob in anything. Uh, it was just like, I just liked the guy. And Simon, I, I knew his, his work, but very outside of like cinema work. How did you know? <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I know that I do music, yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. Can I add to that? Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Because what happened was, uh, he, <clears throat> we were in, uh, he also, uh, Alex Coco produced Red Rocket, and we were in Cannes for Red Rocket, and then uh, he said, I want you to meet Sean Price Williams, and uh, he said, you, you, he shot this, I'm like, oh yeah, and then we had lunch, and I was like, oh yeah, I want to work with this guy, and then I remember my agent saying, oh, we got to be wary of, uh, Weary, no, wary, not weary, <laughs> wary of uh, first time directors. And I was like, but I know this guy's gonna be good. And so we met with my agent and showed him the first half of the movie that was shot yeah, six months prior. And he saw it and was like, okay, yeah, we should do this. Like, yeah. uh, and we did. Yeah, so that benefited us in that way too, because having him already shot half the movie, we can show what he was wanting yeah. to do. And that snork guy, yeah, what's his name? The snork? The cocaine monster. Yeah, 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 Bart, 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 Barto? Barto. 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 Barto.
this for thin cut. And we were like, what? Yeah. We <laughs> gotta feature this huge cocaine snorting like a hardcore uh, freakazoid New Yorker. That that's character is the classic New Yorker. Yeah, that's the character, that's the guy who's funding Jeremy and I was moving. That's the guy, that's the money guy. That's the, you know, I love the way the, the writer talks about the character, but um, yeah, that's like, you know, that's like the guy, you know, he's kind of fun, he's weird looking, but, you know. That's a really awesome scene, and actually one of the scenes that we kind of do for ourselves, Dave, and it's just with Bart talking at me for five oh, minutes straight. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool, because he's in the movie, too? No. He makes my own noise now, so. Wow. so. It was also, also the first day that our finance here showed up on set. We were shooting that scene. <laughs> yeah, so there's three scenes with that character actually that are basically all cut out of the movie. And it was just a combination of not knowing how to direct the Muppet. I mean, just really, <laughs> that guy really was a lot sharper than we give him credit. But it was, yeah, it was, and then the guy operating the Muppet, the Muppet, he built the Muppet, and he built it like 150 pounds and just sort of rested on his shoulders. And, and uh, he, just, he just couldn't really move. And, and couldn't see. Yeah, he couldn't see. We couldn't hear if he was okay. He started to just sort of dip. And, yeah, we couldn't hear him through the fabric. It was weird. But most it was a people, failure. Most of the people in New York were snorting that much cocaine, you usually can't do that. <laughs> um, so, Earl, you're also one of the people who like, saw the first half, I guess? Uh, Which saw the second half? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. What was that like when uh, you got the call from Sean Chris Williams? Well, I don't know. I guess it's, uh, they called me up and um, we did a, we just sort of zoomed and he wanted me to see if I could do an accent, and I guess he thought I could, which was probably a mistake. Um, and we, uh, and I, I, was, I was cast kind of late, like right at the end, I think it's because you were struggling to find an actor with loads of uh, cock brains, dick piercing, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that was the first thing we were looking for. <laughs> but I guess funny because the accent thing is, Nick actually wrote, because for you, you're English and you're American or whatever, it's, is kind of cool and strange. <laughs> so they wrote this whole thing where they did the son of a diplomat to sort of explain maybe he grew up in different places. Yeah, so a lot of time. Then we wrote that a little bit on set there. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Smart. Yeah. No, so you showed him on the Zoom. Mm -hmm. The hardware or whatever? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, That's the way to get a job. That's the new casting couch. It is. <laughs> the Zoom. Usually a girl pretends that it's real and that okay. Yeah, you don't really want it. And some people believe that it's real. <laughs> And then I'm also, but where is it actually? Because I've never seen it by itself. It's not. I don't know where I'm Why are you looking at me? I'm the call master. No, I don't know where it was. No one knows where it's Yeah, yeah. Earl's like, no one knows. Uh, it's not real. Yeah, I don't know where it is. It's not real. But I just assume. Because I heard it was the same guy that made his. Same thing. Same thing. Why did they have to make it? Not the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same Why was yours not real? And rather, I think it's illegal to be. It has to be. We're gonna have trouble with my youth one day. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, Earl's peeking at me. It's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I love. Um, can I just say I love the the sense of humor in the film? I think it just is on a lot of different registers. You know, I like the kind of the, to laugh personally. And uh, one of my favorite jokes is like one of the stupidest ones that actually Earl's. Um, art to this performance is so intense that it actually blows up the computer. <laughs> like that, like they don't actually have those problems anymore, Sean. That's a very like 1986 yeah. kind of joke. Yeah, it's still oh, a lot of computer oh, it's overloaded with just this intensity. <laughs> that's that's a good joke. It's playing with like a, some sort of knobs. Some audio mixer. Knobs. <laughs> yeah, knobs and stuff. It's, it's and, that's, and then also like the joke of. Um, you know, the coffee, where the, the, the Teamsters, yeah. there's a little hole in the coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a good joke, man. It's <laughs> bullshit like that. Should we open up to the crowd? <laughs> should we do yeah. that? Was, that we shot that, uh, I should tell you. No, no, it's it was like we shot that whole massacre like a week after, or two weeks after maybe the Rust incident. We had already storyboarded it and everything. We had to change it. You have to say that now. No. Um, yeah, so we changed it so that, you know, the director and the DOP didn't, Die and you know, I think that uh, you know, we changed the Good, time. good thing you had eyes right. on set, yeah. double, triple check. Well, what we, we did lose our armor, yeah. which was interesting because now, like, all the, all the studio jobs in New York 
they like had like tripled up on their armors and everything like this. So we lost our guys. We were like, we had no safety. When you had Francisco, so we had absolutely the biggest guns, the worst guns I've ever seen. Well, yeah. Jeremy yeah. talked about them. These are the big yeah. guns. Yeah. 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 I made, made it. I made it. I made it. Yeah. I, I grew up with guns, and I, I had very specific ideas about the guns and things like that. And they showed up. Well, I thought the real gun was the laser gun that the Crown Circuit was. Yeah, so we should have said that. I would, you know, we could tell that it was, you know, goofy. And then we were trying to, I was trying to change it. I was like, Sean, can you maybe just, you know, shh, do this? Oh, oh, yeah. And you were like, we're a buck, 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 we love all this gun talk, guys, but let's open it up to the audience. Thank you for that information. Anyone? So the, the, the whole sequence with Io and Jeremy and um, Jacob, was that in the original? Did you do ad lib that? Or how, I mean, I thought it was hilarious. That yeah, whole yeah most, of, most of the movie is, is really scripted. And then when Jeremy and Jacob, I'm sorry, Jeremy and Io uh, do their sort of spiel when she's auditioning, that was about six lines of dialogue, and they went on and on for about like a nine minute tape. And it was, <laughs> and it was one of two times we had two cameras going, which was, which was That was helpful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I don't really like the two camera thing, usually it's just a lot of like, compromising, and then you, I don't know what to think is the, is the end, you know, I don't know. It wasn't helpful, except in that moment. And um, even though when we first cut it, probably even maybe you saw, there was no cut, it was just. You think I didn't see that? It was just a, the uncut uh, take, and I was like, this is pure, this is. Or as you call it, the uncut gem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the uh, one day I was like, no, I think it's actually a good thing for movies. And I said this last night, like, yeah, I, I, I can watch movies that are like one take. Yeah, it's just a wonder. Yeah, it's slow it's, cinema. It's, like, yeah, it's such a dumb idea, but it ends up great. And uh, I think it helps the movie. Yeah, it helps the actors, yeah. the flow. But yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy and I, they, just, they, weren't, they were not preparing that. They just did it, you know. They're, they know each other, they work at the uh, time. They were just, three of them were, you know, kind of incredible. I'd be in the car with them, listening to them. We, they talked about everything other than the movie. And then we would just show up, and then that's what happened, yeah. Any other hard I, I was gonna be on SNL next week, so she Hey, that's cool. Woo! And she's gonna kill him. <laughs> Point to people, Sean. I was, I was just curious, like, uh, was there a huge uh, shift since you, you know, obviously you're a very well eclectic cinematographer, was there a huge shift from going from the cinematography to cinematography and directing as well? Yeah, I mean, that's why I picked actors, so they just like, thought it would be nice to hang out with, because I'm really nervous about that whole, like, you know, um, relationship between the director and the actors, so you have to, and, you know, I, I don't know that I'm good at that yet, um, but I mean, with the camera, with them, it was fun, it's like it always is my, when I'm shooting anybody else's movies, you know. Um, it wasn't some crazy job. I was thinking less about lighting, but I was engaging the same way as I normally do, actually. And, and you know, Talia also, well, I mean, everybody, but Talia really understood the character so well that, it, that there weren't, she wasn't hitting me with questions and challenges and things like that. It was just, it was just kind of you watch things happen, come to life. They're smart actors. You didn't hit with any big questions, Talia? I think I did. And a lot of times you'd be like, I don't know what to say. It was always strange questions. Like, I didn't understand, like, you know, like, all the big stuff you understood better than me, and you just asked about like, a word or something. I did. Okay. It was, it was interesting. <laughs> but no. Maybe time for two more queries. We just keep asking the front row. Like, that would be interesting. Huh? Oh, man. Oh, all right, Sean. Say your questions at the same time, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, my question, the, the the scene where Earl swinging his back dog shit, uh, like was it well, intentional callback to the... It, <laughs> to the, to the he went into the trash can and found that. That's a real bad yeah. shit. Yeah, we can control it. I opened the can and I opened my eyes and I was just bagging dog shit. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what like, was an intentional uh, no, no, callback to it? We drove to Philadelphia for two shots, basically. We went from New York, we were racing against the sun, taking the van that was probably not going to make it. It's just like, you know, we thought it break down any second. We were racing to Philadelphia because we could have faked that scene anywhere in Brooklyn, but like, you know, we got to find <laughs> this, like, you know, we got to do a little Philadelphia thing. It doesn't mean, no, one says, no one says Philadelphia in the movie. They do. They say Trenton. Yeah. Where do they go? They say Philly. Okay, yeah. Well, I, 
I say it in a bad way. Well, yeah. Oh, right. 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 Yeah, that's different. Yeah. Anyway, we had to go to Philadelphia because I love Philadelphia, and we brought the whole crew down there for two shots, and then we, you know, drank and ate cheesesteaks and stuff like that. But, but yeah, that was just that was just a corner that we thought was representative of where these guys were really hanging out and stuff, and the dog shit was there. Thanks for that question. <laughs> Maybe someone in the middle. All right, no, no, look at this big waving, right? Wait, wait. But it's Colin and Thanks, Colin. All right, one of these, and then we'll get back to you. Okay. No, I don't, yeah, I don't want to hurt you. I'm going to stand just so I can project. Um, bear with me as I ask, because I'm so processing the movie, but this is for Italia. I feel like with your character, a lot of people were projecting their experiences and what they wanted from her, and at first it seemed like she's just sitting there and facing it and not there, and she doesn't understand what's like going on and what they're saying. But then we kind of find out that she kind of takes her power back by absorbing those stories and then using it to get justice or execute whatever intention she has. So I'm curious if that analysis is correct and how you use that to articulate your character and her intentions that she had kind of under the surface. Yeah, I mean, Explain it more eloquently than I'll be able to, but I mean, what's on the page is that she's a good listener and she takes all these pieces of information and tips and jokes and stories from other people and uses them either back to the person that she got them from or later on. I think, yeah, she's just, she's fun. She's taking everything in and I also think she learned pretty early on with Earl's character that with a little bit of posture change and performance, she can play into whatever fantasy it is that the man in front of her wants from her. And I think she listens and takes on that first and then enjoys playing whatever role it is that they're looking for until that gets boring and then she goes to the next one. She's hanging out with us, you know, and we're kind of like those characters a little bit too. So you're, really, you're keeping practice and practice the whole time. I'm trying to make it a movie. Nick, Nick, is very, Nick the writer is very much Lawrence. Um, and Down to the blanket. Yeah, you know, no. Just not, kidding. Yeah. No, I just want to say in the film you were constantly. Yeah, yeah. It's really not a movie. She keeps raising her hand. Oh, Red. Oh, Red. Oh, Red. 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 Oh, I do two more. Two more. Yeah, two more. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, for the actors, I was just curious um, to hear what uh, drew you to this film. Um, Talia, I saw you in How to Defend Yourself at the New York Theater Workshop. And Simon, I'm pretty sure I saw you play a cannibal a couple weeks ago in Down Low. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, which were just two very different roles. Um, than this film, and I was just curious as to how you picked these roles. Okay, so she asked, she asked how I picked the role, and I picked the Jason one here. What did she ask you? What? Why did she it was for all three of you. Okay, are oh, you guys go first? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the script was awesome. I mean, just on paper, it was really interesting. And I read a lot of really bleak and boring scripts that I work for people who don't really know how to write teenage girls. And you mentioned How to Defend Yourself, which was a play I did in New York last year. And I think like a big theme in scripts that I'm drawn to is gender and performance. I feel like those things in, in different ways kind of are about that. Yeah, I, mean, I just sort of, I mean, in the same way that the way you cast it is that, you know, like when you told it, it's like you were cool and nice. Yeah, it was really fun to do. It's on school. Yeah, it's really cool. And yeah, also, yeah, the script is like insane. You know, never read anything like that the first time. And uh, to answer your question, I think you're like you're normally lucky in this business to get a shitty TV show guest star or something. So to work with like kind of the cool indie New York scene to me was like a rare opportunity. So I wanted to do it. I knew it would work for me. I just trusted. I just knew it would be a cool project. And then about the one where I played the um. 
prostitute, uh, necrophiliac, not a cannibal, but a necrophiliac. I didn't, I didn't eat anybody. Uh, yeah, I'm a necrophiliac, which is someone who has sex with dead bodies. Both, so a Nazi and a necrophiliac are both fun roles uh, that you want to do, right? So I wanted to do them. And, and James Beck was the first guy who signed on. He, he got the script somehow before we had funding, before anything. And he just like liked the script and he called me and said he wanted to do it. And I was like, okay. I don't know when or when to again, but yeah, sure, great. <laughs> and uh, Jeremy O'Harris is a good buddy of mine, and, and it was going to be him and Janixa Bravo originally, but she had to be on a jury when we were shooting for a film festival. Uh, and so she suggested Io, and uh, great. We, we, we loved that. And Rich was a friend. Rich and her just worked together, so she suggested Rich. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff. Can I suggest, suggest anybody? Anybody? I'm getting, I'm Make it really quick. I'm getting the signal. Quick, quick. That's a really long, I can get It's an awesome question. It's five <laughs> words. No, 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 yeah, yeah. Labyrinth, Labyrinth was in my head. Uh, uh, she picked up the gun and put the hat on in the tent. So that, like, though, in our element, I was, you know, like watching the monitor and just, wow, this is great, you know. It's, 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 there's a, the, real, the real things that I was thinking about are not really on the screen and, and, and not say what they are in a room full of people, probably a stranger just lays together. Uh, yeah, it's just not, it's not so uh, definitely a cost, Sean, after the film and get yeah. his big reference list. I just want to thank uh, the actors again and uh, Sean and Alex for coming out. And thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.